Hello, I am talking to you today from the conference room, and Miss Desotels is being nice enough to share with me some of her space while she's getting your tax stuff together. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm sorry my voice doesn't sound very good today. I'm a little bit hoarse, but I want you to work a little bit on this worksheet, Half-Life of Radioactive Isotopes. I'm going to do a few of the sample problems with you to get you started. And I'll also go with you over the back side, which is the nuclear decay equations, so you can work on that during your lesson time today. Okay, on the back, um, let's start with radioactive isotopes. Now remember, the formula that we're using to solve these problems, you've done it maybe a, a similar way in math, but the one that we're using, the remaining amount of a sample of radioactive isotope equals the initial amount times 0.5 raised to the nth power. Okay, and n is the number of half-lives that have passed. Sometimes the problem will tell you how many half-lives have gone by. Sometimes they don't tell you. If they don't tell you, then you have to work it out where, I'm going to write this up at the top, n is the total amount of time divided by the length of one half-life. Okay, so you can find n that way too. And since you have a mathematical formula here, all you have to do is identify in the problem what your variables are and plug it in. So let's look at the first problem. How much of a 100 gram sample of gold 198 is left after 8.10 days if its half-life is 2.70 days? Okay, well, a 100 gram sample is our initial amount. So I'll put that I by that. We're looking for how much is left, right? So we're looking for remaining. So remaining we don't know. And then the amount of time that's gone by, 8.10 days, is the total amount of time. And then the half-life is 2.70 days. This is T with a subscript of one half. It's just a symbol for half-life. So in this problem, remaining equals 100 grams times 0.5 raised to the nth power. And I can find n by knowing the total amount of time, 8.10 days divided by 2.70 days, which is 3. So substitute 3 in place of my n right there. And then on my calculator, I'm going to put in 0.5 raised to the third power which is 0.125 and then multiply by 100. <clears throat> so our answer here is 12.5 grams. So what this means is that before time started, the number of half-lives was zero. The initial amount was 100 grams. And so after one half-life, you had 50 grams. After two half-lives, there were 25 grams. And after the third half-life, it went down to 12 and a half grams. Okay, so there's another way you can solve it, but don't forget to reason it out. Let's try number two. Don't forget you can pause if you need to pause the video. You can rewind it if you need to hear it again. Okay, let's try 50 gram sample of nitrogen 16 decays to 12.5 grams in 14.4 seconds. What is its half-life? Okay, this time we're starting with the 50 gram sample is our initial amount. It decays to 12.5 grams, so that's remaining. And the amount of time that's gone by is 14.4 seconds. Okay, so 50 grams. times 0.5 raised to the power of n is equal to 12.5 grams. 
Well, I can simplify that a little bit. I can divide both sides by 50. So 12.5. Divided by 50 is 0.25. So now I have 0.25 equals 0.5 raised to the nth power. And I know that if I uh, solve for n here, if I multiply 0.5 times 0.5, watch this, I get 0.25. So the value of n is equal to 2. So if n equals 2, what is its half-life? 14.4 seconds go by in two half-lives. So one half-life has to be half of 14.4. So 7.2 uh, seconds. Okay. Um, number three is pretty straightforward. Let's look at number four. What's the half-life of technetium-99 if a 500-gram sample decays to 62.5 grams in 639,000 years? So the initial amount is 500 grams. 62.5 is its amount remaining. And this is how much time has passed. So what I have is 62.5 equals 500 grams times 0.5 raised to the nth power. Simplify that. 62.5 divided by 500 is 0.125. How many times do we need to do 0.5 to get 0.125. Well, 0.5 raised to the second power, we already saw this 0 0.25. 0 0.5 raised to the third power is 0.125. So n equals 3. And so 60, 639,000 years go by in three half lives. So 639,000 divided by 3 is. 213,000 years. That's a long time. Okay, I'm going to give you one little hint I want to do with you on number five because on number five it has scientific notation and you have a temptation to go, oh no, it's hard just because it's scientific notation, but it's really not. The half life of 200, uh, this is thorium 232, is 1.4 times 10 to the 10th years. Okay, that's the half life. If there are 25 gram sample, sam, sorry, 25 grams of the sample left after 2.8 times 10 to the 10th years, how many grams were in the original? So we're solving for the initial amount, but let's look at the part where we solve for n. The total amount of time is 2.8 times 10 to the 10th years, and the half life is 1.4 times 10 to the 10th years. So hey, look at that. The 10 to the 10 completely cancels out, and you have 2.8 divided by 1.4, which is 2. So that's really not that hard. Now, if you didn't have numbers that were easy to cancel out that way, don't forget, you can put it in your calculator, and you would use that second function and the little comma button up there above the 7 to get that little EE, -E, right? Remember when we did Avogadro's number? So you do 2.8 second EE -E 10 and divide by 1.4 second comma 10 and you still get 2. Okay, and then you can apply that to if there's 25 grams left, so that's the remaining amount, then what's the initial amount times 0.5 raised to the second power? And you can simplify that. So your assignment for this activity is to finish the problems. You need to do number three, finish number five, and do number six, and be sure you show your work. You also need to do the other side of the paper, but I'm going to put that in the next video clip. Let me know if you have any questions.